Hello, this is Paula at Olive Vision Photography in England. Um, I've had a lot of questions recently in groups about DxO. And DxO, who are a French company, have just launched their new product, which is DxO Photo Lab. Now, um, I'm a big DxO fan, um, to the point that many of my photographer friends online cruelly joke about my love of DxO. Um, but, so I'm going to show you why I love DxO and why I think it's the best image editing software. I do use Lightroom as well and I use Photoshop so I'm not saying don't use other things but I'm going to show you why I use DxO and DxO is my first line editing. So um, at the moment I've got an excellent example because I shot a wedding last weekend which was in an incredibly dark venue and it was ridiculously dark and then they turned the lights off. And this image is from the end of the evening. By the end of the evening, I was shooting at 20,000 ISO on a 5D4. You can see my settings over here, 20,000, F2, 1 100th of a second. Um, and obviously there is flash used. Now, um, the room actually had orange walls. So where you can see me facing a white wall here, the wall behind me is bright orange. Um, so you can see it here on this picture. Um, so that that's the wall that my back is to. So you can see there's just like no real way to bounce the flash. So I actually used a Stofan diffuser, um, one of the orange ones, um, and it got really, really close with the white balance. So um, the images have, have come out really well. I'm really, really pleased with them. Um, so I'm going to show you the unedited image. You can see that there. So I think I think that's not bad at all, really, for 20,000 ISO. Um, obviously, the skin tones are a little bit yellow, um, so I've corrected the white balance slightly. I've also made other changes in DxO Film Pack to give me the skin tones that I wanted. So I'm very happy with these skin tones. I think they look incredibly natural for considering the totally appalling lighting conditions involved um, for this shoot. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you're not a DxO user and you don't know what it does. So I'm going to take on a tour of the right hand panel here and show you the changes that DxO is making to this image. And then we'll zoom in and you can see uh, just how good it really is at 20,000. So uh, I've bumped the exposure. I've corrected the, the white balance very slightly. I've bumped the exposure by a quarter of a stop. Um, we've got a slight bump here in the shadows. Um, Noise reduction is switched off at the moment because I want to show you that in a moment. Um, vignetting correction, that is on, I believe. Yes, I, it's on. 100% is the default. For this shoot, um, I've reduced that default down to 50%. Um, so if I just click 100, you, can you see it lightening more around the edges? Um, but I think I just turned it down to 50 just um, to reduce noise around the edges. Um, Colour rendering, that's actually done in film pack. Um, Unsharp mask, I've set to 100. Distortion is on by default in DxO. I'll switch that off. You can see what it does. I mean, the, the lens involved here, obviously, is the 35L Mark I. Um, which is a pretty decent lens. So, But you can see, if I toggle it on and off, it is correcting distortion around the edges. Um, now this one is really interesting, and I haven't seen this in, in any competitor product, volume deformation. Now, what I'm just going to do is find you an image where I've got people on the edge because you you have to see this to believe what volume deformation does it's really amazing 
Um, okay, right, here's one. Okay. Right, okay, so on this one, volume deformation is is on because I've switched it on. And this is an, an image at 16,000 ISO. If I click this, I want you to watch what happens to this lady here. See how she's got fatter? Look, that's me switching it on and off. You can see she's getting fatter and thinner. Um, so this effect is even more pronounced with wider angle lenses. So if you use something like the 24 to 105 L to shoot groups, um, then you really see the difference where volume deformation is sucking the people in that are on the edges. Um, and it gets rid of that effect where, where people look fatter towards the edges of the frame. And I think it's one of the best features of DxO. So let me go back to our picture. Um, let's see what else we've got switched on. I think that's all we've got switched on, actually. Um, so let's zoom in and take a good old nosy at the noise. Um, if we zoom in one to one onto this lady's black shirt. So looking at the uncorrected image, I think actually we might be able to do it. Ah, there we go. Right. So this is with noise switched off. Right. Um, so obviously you are seeing noise. We've got a decent amount of noise in the skin. There's also I noticed this bit here by her neck where the wall is white. You see that? There's a lot of noise just in that corner there. Now, what I'm going to do is switch noise reduction on. And you watch that disappear now. This is high quality noise reduction, um, which is, I think, usually on by default. What I'm going to do is switch prime on. I tend to use prime for anything over about two and a half thousand ISO with the 5D4. With the 5D3, um, anything over 2000. Now, if we just scroll around and just look at the difference on these, what you're looking at now is the preview of high of, of the HQ. So I'll just switch it back to HQ so that you can see that I'm not doing any trickery. So this is high quality noise reduction, which is a step down from what D DxO can do. Now, obviously, we're looking at this at a 120% zoom. I'm just going to scroll around this so you can have a nosy. Yeah, we've got white flecks coming in here where we've bumped the shadows. And I, I noticed there was a black speaker down in the corner. So I'm going to take you to have a look at that. You can see there's quite a significant difference here in the skirt. And looking down here at the speaker where you'd expect we've got the black um, we've got the noise stripped out here and it just becomes little white dots now what i want to show you is what happens when we switch prime on um, so let me just go back here and ooh, come on what are you doing one to one i'm going to switch prime on the only way you can preview Prime is in this tiny little window here. So if I switch Prime on, I want you to, you can see here, we've got a preview of this section here. And watch what happens to the, those tiny dots. Can you see they've gone? So the noise that, that appears in high quality noise reduction on this one, gets even smaller when we look at the prime preview. So let's go back to the speaker and see what happens when we put, this is our little magnifier. So let's put it here and see what happens to the noise. It's thinking. There you go, look. So on your final print, when it's exported, that is the actual noise that you see. So and when you compare that to it's 
to this, it's really quite a stunning difference, isn't it? That is that is a huge difference in noise. I mean, even just high quality noise reduction is a difference. But when you then switch prime on, it's even better. Um, so with DxO, I'm able to shoot at very high ISOs and get images that are printable at A4 size that have no discernible noise. Um, obviously, you have to be really good at getting your exposure correct. Um, just get it right in camera as much as you can and DxO will do the rest. Um, I, I think it's an amazing product. I've been using it for the last few years. In fact, it was the first um, photography software I bought um, and uh, I've been using it since DxO2 and sort of they've, they've come on the journey with me into you know my my life as a full-time professional photographer now um, and I, I feel that it really gives me an edge with low light event photography so I uh, I hope that helps I think I've shown you everything you need to see there are lots more little things that it does um, and in fact with the new product which is photo lab We've got local adjustments, so um, we could, for example, I'll just show you here. If if I wanted, you can see I've got the, the brush here, which uh, gets bigger and smaller as I slide that. And also your feathering, you can see what it's actually doing, which I really like that. So if I did want to lighten up this lady's face a little bit, then... I could do and um, my controls come up right here in the image and as soon as I click on them they disappear um, so it's just giving you an idea of, uh, of of what it will do and then if I want to delete that I can just hit the delete button I think go away that's it there we go he's gone um, and then you just close the local adjustments panel by clicking on that again. So uh, I hope that's been useful. Goodbye.